Hello, I'm Julian Bergini and welcome to another film in the series which brings philosophy to your kitchen and hopefully all the way to your table. Today I'm going to be making marmitako, which is a Basque fisherman's stew. Uh, the question is, is it going to be authentic and does it really matter? So here's what you need for this. You just need a couple of red peppers, any kind, not necessarily this variety, a tin of chopped tomatoes, some albacore tuna in oil, some pimenton, garlic and potatoes. A bit of wine, red wine does help both the dish and the cook. So this is really simple one pot cooking because it's the kind of thing that people used to make in one pot on a boat. All you have to do is in a big pan, soften up the garlic and the pepper in the oil from the tin, from the tuna, that gives it a lot of flavor. You then add that to that, uh, the potatoes and the tomatoes and the pimenton, and you let that simmer for a long, long time. It takes over an hour sometimes, it depends on the type of potato. And then when it's ready, you just add in the tuna at the very end and warm it through and serve. And while I show you how to do that, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what tradition means and why it's important or why it may not be. One problem with claiming that some dishes are authentic and others aren't is that it all depends on when you arbitrarily choose to decide what time in history is your reference point. Every tradition was once a novelty, Italian cooking provides innumerable examples of this. Tomatoes, of course, were only introduced after the discovery of the New World in 1492, and they only became common in the mid 19th century. Pasta does have a very long history, predating Marco Polo, but it only became a national staple after the Second World War. At one time, it was also eaten very soft, not al dente, as is now considered the traditional authentic way. Before the arrival of tomatoes, it was often eaten with a sprinkle of cheese or sugar and spice. As for balsamic vinegar, well, my family was typical in never having once had a bottle in their house. Now, none of this totally debunks the idea of tradition. It's simply a reminder that traditions are dynamic, not static. The problem we have is that when we seek to preserve traditions, we often end up killing them by ossifying them, pickling them, stopping them from evolving. I'm afraid this is often true of the various European labeling schemes, such as the PDO, which are supposed to show that the food stuff comes from a particular region and is made in accordance with traditional techniques. Now, not only do these rules actually prevent traditions from evolving, often what they set in stone isn't actually that authentic and traditional at all. Now, my favorite example of this is Stilton cheese. Now, of course, in days gone by, Stilton would have been made with unpasteurized milk, but the producers who helped formulate these rules have actually fixed them now so that if you do make your cheese with unpasteurized milk, it can't be called Stilton. So ironically, the most authentic traditional Stilton style cheese you can get can't be called Stilton. So the producers called it Stichelton, and I firmly recommend you try it. If we see tradition as being dynamic, you can see where its value lies. When you work within a tradition, your innovations are not just experiments out of the blue, but they build on the accumulated wisdom of previous generations. It's like what people often say about art, which is that you need to know the rules in order to break them. A sense of tradition also gives a sense of where you and the things around you have come from and a longer perspective which puts now in its place. A great contemporary Italian cook like Giorgio Locatelli, for example, understands that the cuisine of his country requires combining relatively few good, pure ingredients well. He also understands that there's a kind of core palette of flavors that provide the basis for anything that goes on top. Within these and other limitations, he can create genuinely new combinations that are nonetheless firmly located within the tradition a kind of novelty that works precisely because it is never completely new. But because people have the wrong idea of tradition, it can be hard to take people on that journey. Locatelli told me, if I go to any Italian restaurant now in Italy, which is a little bit nice, you'll have a raw fish carpaccio. It's something Italians eat all the time now. You can't do that here because people say, I didn't come to an effing Italian restaurant to eat raw fish. Talking of raw fish, you can of course make this with fresh tuna, 
But first, I don't think it really improves it much. And secondly, Albacorde is far and away the most sustainable tuna and it's very hard to find it fresh. It's ready now. So I'm gonna have a nice bowl of this. I mean, actually I kind of get a little bit of a kick when I eat this out of just thinking about how, you know, this is something which would have been, you know, made on the boats by the Basque fishermen. Is it really authentic or not? Is it traditional? Well, I don't think that really matters. I think the point about tradition is that you kind of respect it and understand a bit of it and you try and work with it. It's not about simply trying to copy something or keep things going. And I think that, you know, cooking within a tradition and understanding where it comes from enriches our experience and we really don't have to worry with this bogus cult of authenticity. Because let's face it, the result is something which I think is really tasty. <laughs> it's too hot to reason. Mm. Good. Are you ready for this?